Today I'm taking my 2015 Chevy Spark EV from Paragold, Arkansas to one at Ridge. When I first got the car eight weeks ago today, I had a rule. Anytime I went 60 miles round trip, I took my charging cable with me just in case I needed it. I did that for probably two weeks. Then I realized it just wasn't necessary. I got where I knew what this car could do, but I've never been to one at Ridge before. So I'm taking my charging cable, even though I'm not going to need it. But I have a family member there that I think wants to drive my car. And if they do, depending on how many miles they put on, I might need a charge while I'm sitting around visiting with them. But I don't think so. But I'm taking it just because I've never been there. So why not? It only took a few seconds to load it up in the car. So we're going to see what kind of range we get today. I think it's about, I think it's about 20, where I'm going is about 25 miles, I think, one way. So 50 miles. My car is fully charged. It says 73, which is a little low. It's been saying 77 and 78 lately. But uh, I should, I'll make it easy. You know, so long as, like I said, my family member doesn't drive the wheels off of it or something. So, let's see what we're going to do. Well, everybody, everybody's passing me today. And I'm not even driving like I normally do in an electric car. I'm actually going three miles over the speed limit. Normally, I drive exactly the speed limit. But it's 55. I'm going 58. You know, but I'm going to one at Ridge, Arkansas today, and that town is nuts for the Beatles. And the reason is, in the 60s, the Beatles landed their airplane in Water Ridge Regional Airport. And I'm not sure, but I think they got in a car and drove to Missouri, Southern Missouri. I'm not sure what happened. Maybe they just landed and took off. But anyway, because the Beatles once landed in Water Ridge, the town, is they've built um, a statue to the Beatles there's a gift shop I've never been in that I think has Beatles memorabilia they've built something called the rock and roll uh, walk of fame I think it's called which that is pretty cool it's shaped like a guitar you walk along it and it has uh, little things that talk about the people that drove through this area when they were performing in the 50s like Elvis Presley and um, I'm thinking, I can't remember who else. I don't want to say any other names in case I get them wrong. But Jerry Lee Lewis, you know, and you get, and it has some little snippets of their music you can uh, listen to during the, on this rock and roll walk of fame. You know, it's, uh, some of it's pretty neat, but it's just a little bitty small town. And I have a lot of family that live in Water Ridge. And one of my family members, they drive to Paragould every day to work, which is where I live. And Paragould and traffic traffic in Paragould is horrible it's just it's just re ridiculous but not in Water Ridge as a matter of fact he hates the traffic in Paragould as bad as I do and he said the good thing about Water Ridge is we only have two traffic jams a year 15 minutes before and 15 minutes after the Christmas parade the only time you'll see a traffic jam in Water Ridge but it's a nice little town I'm going there today to make a little bit of money and to see a family member or two. One at Ridge. All we need is love. <laughs> There's an Elvis Presley stat statue. Love me tender. And right up here is the, uh, what I believe is the Beatles store. Except I've never been in it. Oh, must be closed. Okay, I made it. Let's see what we did on this trip of 28 and a half miles. Man, that's a lot further than I thought it was. A little, well, a few miles further. 5.2 miles per kilowatt hour, driving 63 part of the way and 58 part of the way. Okay, I'm going to swing around here and show the Beatles statue. I would get my wheelchair out and get a closer shot of it, but it's a lot of trouble. There's the yellow submarine. Um, something about Star Wars. There's some more Beatles stuff. Maybe this is, yep. 
butterflies right there. But there's a little thing about when the Beatles came to town. I should get out and read it because I don't know the story for sure. But like I said, I don't think, I think the plane just landed and they went into Missouri to perform or do something. And I'm a few years ago, Walnut Ridge decided to have a big Beatles thing, you know, a big Beatles celebration. And they invited Paul McCartney to come to Walnut Ridge and join in on the festivities. And he said, you guys are nuts. I don't, I don't even remember your crappy little town. Leave me alone. Actually, that's probably what he thought. But he was very polite, but declined. Of course, there was no chance he was going to come here. But anyway, you know, I guess uh, it seems kind of weird that they landed their plane here and now the whole town is Beatle crazy. But I guess that's better than being Britney Spears crazy for sure. You know, it's cool. It's, I guess it's kind of neat they landed here once, I guess. Amtrak even stops here in Wanted Ridge. You know, not many places in the south where Amtrak stops. But they stop right here even though the depot is closed. But people come here to catch the train if they want to travel. And right here is the, uh, the walk I was talking about. The walk of fame or rock and roll walk of fame or something. Again, if I wasn't too much trouble, I'd get my wheelchair out. Get a better look. But you can tell right there. Shaped like a guitar, and all those things you see there, all those little platforms, tell about different artists, and you can hit a button and listen to some of their music. Johnny Cash was one that went down this highway when he performed a lot. But, you know, this, this is kind of neat. If you're ever in the one at Ridge area to come look at it, I kind of like it. I did it once. Well, Matter of fact, I've never sat in the passenger side before. <laughs> because uh, Pam's never driven it with me in here. How does she like it? Well, she thinks it's ugly, and she puts a lot of emphasis on looks. I don't care about looks. No, that, that thing's kind of cute. I started to go get a new one. These, it wasn't electric. I think it was 12000 Yeah, they're pretty cheap. Okay, leaving one at Ridge. Let me turn this up so you can hear me. Turn the air up so I can talk. Leaving one at Ridge, and I feel so goofy now that I brought my electrical cord. I'm about 22, 23 miles from home, and I can go 43 miles. And it would be better than that, except it's so hot here before I left my aunt's house, then I uh, preconditioned my car, even though it wasn't plugged up, you know, like a remote start. And it ran out here for at least five or six minutes with the air conditioner running. You know, but um, anyway, that, that was goofy, me bringing my cord. But, going back, the elevation in 22, 23, 24 miles, the elevation is changing by 30 feet. So, it may not be, you know, I may not have 20 miles when I get back. I may be down to 15 or so. But whatever it is, I'm going to make I'm just curious what the uh, miles per kilowatt hour is going to be since this is my first time coming here. Since getting my car. You know, this is a nice little town. I've always liked one at Ridge. Woo! I just left my aunt's house and she has a little shih tzu, just like we've got. Ours is named Dinky McFinky. But anyway, I was telling her about how we got Dinky. I told her, oh, probably about 11 years ago, my wife decided she wanted an inside dog. And I did not want an inside dog. So we compromised and got an inside dog. That's how we wound up with Dinky. I drove about three miles over the speed limit on the way here. I'm going five miles over now. 60 miles an hour. And by the way, I did order a map for my phone, and it didn't work out, so I've got another one. I'm going to try another one. Or I may just get a dash cam and use that, because I've been wanting a dash cam anyway. I'm always, I've always been paranoid that I would go on a green light, some moron would run a red light, run into me and swear up and down, I'm the one that ran the red light. Same thing with a four-way stop. You could stop, 
and me runs a red light, light and hits you, well, they could claim you ran the stop sign if there's no witnesses. So I may just do that instead. Here's the thing about driving while I'm recording. Yes, I only have one hand on the steering wheel, but I drive with one hand on the steering wheel 95% of the time anyway. My other hand's usually on an armrest, but I don't like the armrest in this car, so I put my hand on the passenger seat. And I don't look through the camera when I'm driving. You know, the camera's beneath my, my line of vision. So I don't view it as unsafe, as a lot of people tend to think it is. However, though, still, I'm still going to get a mount or some kind of hands-free thing just because I would feel better. I'd feel better about it. And, <clears throat> you know, plus I think the videos would be better anyway. This thing about driving with one hand, when I taught my boys how to drive when they were 16 or so, you know, you're supposed to put your hands on 10 and 2. Well, I told my kids, I said, nope. I said, when you get a woman in the car, one of your girlfriends, you have your hands on 12 and knee, or 12 and shoulder, your choice. Now, that's not what I told my daughter when she started dating. I told her, if that boy touches you, knock the mess out of him. And my uncle told her the same thing, but he said it a lot more vulgar than I did. Double standard? Probably so. But she's my daughter. I ain't want some boy touching her at all. First time I've ever got this. Charge vehicle soon. Six miles to go. Do I have range anxiety? Not really. Um, I'm here in Paragol. We're fixing to be in town driving a lot slower. I predict I'll make it home with about two miles left. I should be fine. But I did learn. Come back from Water Ridge, the elevation changes about one and a half feet per mile. Coming back, I'm going to be doing the speed limit. Today I drove like a regular ice vehicle, about five miles over. Propulsion power is reduced. No problem. I'm about three miles from home. It won't be a problem. Three miles. When the propulsion power is reduced sign came on, I, I thought it died. Because you could definitely feel it went down in power. And I thought for about one and a half seconds the it had shut off. And I thought, wait a minute, I still have a few miles left. But I'm only about a mile from home, so I'm still not worried. I'm home. I did shut the radio off, but I never did shut the air off. Well, I did once. I shut the air off and rolled the windows down, and I thought, oh my God, like 10 seconds later, I rolled them back up, turn the air back on. If I'd been really concerned, no matter how hot it got, I would lift my air off. Terrain, an electric vehicle terrain is a big deal. Like I said, I lost, I went uphill in elevation about 30 feet. I'm guessing 23 or 24 miles for fixing to find out. About one and a half feet per mile. That don't sound like much, but an electric vehicle, it can be a big deal. When I left one at Ridge, I think I had low 40s supposedly I could go. So I burned about 40 miles of range and probably 24 miles. And my miles per kilowatt hour is going to be pretty bad. So I learned something going to Warner Ridge. Go the speed limit. Because anytime I go to Piggott or Truman, I usually go exactly the speed limit. Today I drove just like I did an ice vehicle. Three to five miles over the speed limit. There and back. Uh, so part of the time I was doing 65. You know, and that's one reason I want something with more range. I love this car. Man, this car is fantastic. I wish I could double the size of the battery. Uh, even if it costs a little bit of money. But that's re one reason I want something like a Chevy Boat eventually. Boat with a B. Not the fact so much you can go 300 miles in town, 230 on the highway. That's great. But mainly just so you don't have to think about elevation. You don't have to think, well, it's 70 miles. I'll, I'll be okay. 
No, I want to be thinking, nah, 70 miles, what's the big deal? 100 miles, what's the big deal? 150, what's the big deal? But, and I'm going to buy a Chevy Bolt or something equivalent to it in probably three years. But I still love this car. Uh, you just have to know its limitations. Like I've said, an electric vehicle and a gas vehicle are two totally different tools. Just like a manual hammer and a pneumatic hammer are two different tools. You know, so you got to use the tool for what it's meant for. But anyway, let's see what we got. It's going to be bad. 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour, 28 miles. And I'd have to look at the last video, the video I did when I left to know how many miles it was. But I think 42, 43, 44 when we left. So, yeah. The guessometer was wrong. but The guessometer didn't know I was about to go uphill for 28 miles. Hey. Appreciate y'all watching. Have a good day. And remember, chicks dig scars and electric cars. I shut the car off and thought, I should have taken a picture of that three miles. I started it back up, and now it says two miles. <laughs>
one reason I had only three miles left when I got back, I think, is because my aunt, bless her heart, she's elderly and she's very cold natured. Her house is a little bit warm. Uh, but I want her, I'd rather her be comfortable than me. It's her house. So I'm not about to say anything or act like I'm hot. When I left, I was just burning up. And all the way home, I think I had the car set on 72, the temperature, the thermostat. I normally leave it on 76 and 77, but I just could not cool off. I might have had it on 74. Either way, the air conditioner blew really hard all the way home. Plus the fact I was going 65 a good bit of the way. Um, yeah, 65 and then 60, uh, which is about five miles over the speed limit in both places. So that's another reason. The air conditioner was blowing, blowing, blowing. And even when I got home, I was so hot. Took a shower, and I'm still hot. I've got my home air conditioner turned down way below what it normally is, too. So air conditioner normally doesn't have that much drain. But if you're hot-natured and you need that thermostat real low, 70, 72, you may want to think about that before buying an EV. You know, Another reason to have one with as much range as possible so you don't have to worry about climate control. You know, if I had a Chevy Bolt with a B and I could have gone 230 miles today and I went, wound up going about um, close to 70, ooh, big deal. I could have had the air conditioner on 60 and been okay if it would even go that low. All right, this can be the last one. I'm not saying anything else. Y'all have a good day and thanks for watching.